Hello my dear students, welcome back. In today's session, I will be discussing about pleiotropy. Pleiotropy is the phenomenon where one gene affecting more than one phenotype. Normally, one gene determines only one phenotype. But when one gene influences more than one phenotype, then we call the phenomenon as pleiotropy and the gene is called as a pleiotropic gene pleiotropic gene and this pleiotropic gene will have one major phenotype it has one major phenotype and along with that it may show other phenotypes also one major phenotype is present which represents that particular genotype. Along with that, other phenotypes can also be present. Other phenotypes are also present. And this is because of, this other phenotypes is because of interrelationship between the metabolic pathway. So, what is the reason for this many other phenotypes? It is due to interrelationship, interrelationship between, between different metabolic pathways, different metabolic pathways that results in different other phenotypes also. And this phenomenon where more than one phenotype is represented from a single gene that is called as a pleiotropy and pleiotropy is a type of it is an example of inter allelic interaction between two different alleles it is the inter allelic interaction or this is also called as or it is also called intra generic that is within one genus, intrageneric or intragenic also. It is called intragenic. That is within one genus, interallelic means two different alleles. So, this is an example where two different alleles, when they interact, they may show more than one phenotype. Then we call that phenomenon as pleiotropy. Now, let us go through the examples. So, first I will give you, I will discuss the examples. Example wise, let us uh, discuss for pleiotropy. So, first example. First example of pleiotropy. In case of pea plant. So, example 1. This we will consider as example one first example so in pea plant first thing i would discuss in pea, pea plant starch synthesis in pea plant starch synthesis in pea plant and shape of the seed starch synthesis in pea plant and shape of the seed this is controlled by a single gene. These two characters are controlled by a single gene. Now let us see what is the inheritance. Suppose let us try to represent this gene as B which controls both the characters. This is the dominant condition and recessive let us represent as small b. So let us see what happens. Suppose in the first cross, parental cross, this is the parental cross. In parental cross, this is completely homozygous dominant and completely homozygous recessive. So, here we find shape of the seed, dominant shape of the seed is round shape and Wrinkled is the recessive condition. Round is the dominant, wrinkled is the recessive condition. 
and phenotype of starch is with respect to the size of starch grains size of starch grains so in this condition when both are dominant condition it is round in shape with respect to this shape and large size of the starch grains large size of the grains with respect to its recessive parent it is wrinkled wrinkled and small size of the starch grains small size of the starch grains now we find now let us see in f1 generation we find heterozygous condition capital b small b so this gives round shape of the seed which is dominant phenotype round shape of the seed and with respect to starch grains it is been observed that a medium size starch grains is obtained round shape and medium size of the starch grains it is neither very large nor very small and a medium size of the starch grain is obtained now if this f1 is self pollinated after f1 is self pollinated it is observed you know the f2 ratio we get it as capital b capital b capital b small b small b small b this is will be in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 now with respect to the shape of the seed it is giving a round shape here similarly in heterozygous condition also it gives a round shape and here it gives a wrinkled shape but with respect to the size of the starch grains here it is giving a large size and here it is giving a medium size and completely recessive it is giving a small size so we obtain here three different types of phenotypes so here it is concluded that with respect to shape of the seed with respect to the shape it is showing the character is showing dominance with respect to the shape the character the gene is showing the dominance but with respect to the size of the grains with respect to size of the grains this is showing incomplete dominance it is showing incomplete dominance it is showing the incomplete dominance now so here we find the pleiotropy here is first thing is one gene is representing two characters star synthesis and shape of the seed and these two characters are inherited in a different fashion shape is showing dominance size of the grain is showing incomplete dominance so therefore here phenotypic ratio we can calculate by phenotypic ratio phenotypic ratio we can calculate by multiplying phenotypic ratios of these two we know dominance will show a phenotypic ratio of 3 is to 1 multiplied by the incomplete dominance will show a phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 incomplete dominance will show a phenotypic ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1 so here we get a ratio of 3 is to 6 is to 3 is to 1 to 2 is to 1 this will be the phenotypic ratio in case of pleiotropy with respect to starch synthesis now we find another character another character with respect to we find another character with respect to pea plant let us see the second example again with respect to pea plant how it is showing the pleiotropy so in the second example we find a single gene a single gene is influencing again three characters this is also with respect to pea plant 
it is influencing seed coat color it is influencing seed coat color it is also showing another character red spot in the axil of leaf red spot in the axil of leaf third character it is showing is the flower color third character it is showing is the flower color so here also we find a single gene is influencing these three characters so again this can be called as a pleiotropic gene so with respect to p we have seen the two examples now the third example third example is that of phenyl ketoneuria this is a genetic disorder phenyl ketoneuria is a genetic disorder it is mutation in a particular gene which affects the synthesis of the enzyme called phenyl l9 phenyl l9 hydroxylase it affects the synthesis of this enzyme the synthesis is affected synthesis is affected with respect to phenyl keto nuria the synthesis of this will be affected and this is due to mutation in the gene and so this will also cause the other effects not only this effect phenyl keto nuria causes the other effect also here main uh, phenotypic feature is the enzyme phenyl l9 is not uh, metabolized so it is excreted in the urine and gets accumulated so that causes the other effects also so other effects seen in this disease other effect seen in this disease is the major effect mental retardation is seen mental retardation in the patients and loss of pigments in hair and skin loss of pigments loss of pigments in hair and skin so these are the other effect so single gene which is affecting causing this disease is also causing other phenotypic effects so this is also an example of pleiotropic gene now the third example next example of pleiotropic gene we give also we can give the example of sickle cell anemia we can give the example of sickle cell anemia sickle cell anemia shows even codominance also it is an example of lethal gene also and it is an example in case of pleiotropy because in sickle cell anemia the person who is completely normal they are normal but the persons who are carriers that means when they are heterozygous condition they are showing mild anemia they are not normal in heterozygous but they are showing mild anemia that means these two alleles these are showing they show codominance in the patients who are in heterozygous condition easily they can be identified by simple blood test they can be identified in their blood we find along with normal rbcs along with normal rbcs sickle shaped rbcs are also found the rbcs become sickle shaped so along with the normal rbcs but the number will be very less if they are heterozygous condition if they are homozygous in case of uh, say normal condition all the cells will be normal all rbcs will be normal there will not be any sickled rbcs in case of mild anemia less number of sickled rbcs are present and if they are completely homozygous recessive that means they are homozygous for sickle cell then they have they show severe anemic condition 
severe anemia and this severe anemia can be even lethal also. So this is an example of even lethal and it is an example of codominance. Here we consider it as pleiotropic because even though this allele is present, this gene is present, it is showing different phenotypes. If it in heterozygous condition, it is showing mild anemia and in completely homozygous condition, it is showing severe anemia. So that is how three ways, three places we can give the example of sickle cell anemia. I will write it down. First thing here. So where, where we can give? First example we can give in case of pleiotropy. Second example we can give in lethal genes also. I discussed lethal genes. So we can give sickle cell anemia under pleiotropy, under lethal genes. And the third case we can give it under codominance. We can give it under codominance. Under codominance. So this is how we can understand what is a pleiotropy. So, little bit about sickle cell patients or sickle cell anemia, anemic patients. We can say along with this, it is also found that the sickle cell patients, that means those who are in homozygous condition, these also found to, they show resistance to, they show they develop resistance to a particular type of malaria, malaria, it which is caused by plasmodium, plasmodium falciparum, another species falciparum, plasmodium falciparum, it is also called falciparum malaria. So, they show resistance to a particular type of malaria which is caused by plasmodium falciparum. And thus it is and this uh, sickle cell allele also shows the, say it is the effect on development of tissues like bones or lungs, spleen, heart. So, this also affects development. It also affects development of bones or lungs, some tissues, organs etc. So thus we can justify it as a pleiotropy. Now what is the reason for this? What is the genetic defect in case of sickle cell anemia? Sickle cell anemia is due to single gene mutation. It is called as a point mutation. This is called as a point mutation. A single gene will undergo mutation. It is a change in single nucleotide. Change in, change in single nucleotide. Change in single nucleotide. So that is called as a point mutation. So as a result what happens due to change in the single nucleotide there is a replacement of there is a replacement of the amino acid glutamic acid glutamic acid this amino acid is replaced by replaced by another amino acid called valine the amino acid glutamic acid that is replaced by another amino acid called as a called as a valine. So let us see how the what is the actual normal hemoglobin say HbA normal hemoglobin will have for example this is the sequence valine histidine. This is a leucine and then THR means threonine and then proline PRO. Valine, histidine, leucine, threonine, proline and then glutamic acid and another glutamic acid. This is the normal sequence. Now in case of sickle cell, suppose 
sickle cell cells have the sickle shaped rbcs then what happens the normal glutamine will have this is the glutamic acid which may have the codon as gag it may have codon gag now this is replaced so hemoglobin say with a sickle cell suppose rbc so what is the sequence there will be a valine there will be a histidine as usual leucine <coughs> threonine proline and this glutamic acid is replaced by valine and other present as it is so here valine will have a code on g u g so we can find between g a g and g u g there is a change in only one nucleotide a adenine replaced by uracil and then there is a change in glutamic acid to valine and the simple change single amino acid we find such a drastic effect causing the death of the organism so that is those are the that is about briefly about what is a sickle cell so with this children we complete what is a pleiotropy and all the examples of pleiotropy so we will meet again in my next video mostly in my next video i am going to discuss about epistasis which is another very important topic slightly difficult topic also so i'm going to do that in detail in my next video so those who have joined for the first time please subscribe my channel so that you will be getting update for all my upcoming videos thank you very much have a good day